What's up guys, it's Nurse Howie. Happy 2018 Christmas, no, New Year's Eve. Getting ready for 2019. And I wanted to give a recap about the things that I've learned ever since I graduated from nursing school with my RN and a BSN one year ago. Things are, these are lessons that I have learned. It took me about a year to get them. And I hope to give it to you so you wouldn't have to wait the whole year. And maybe you'll have a better year than I did. All right, um, lesson one, enjoy graduation, but keep hustling. If you wanna keep on going right after you graduate from nursing school and start working, you should have sent out your resume about three months before you were gonna graduate. To most of us, at least nurses in California in nursing school, this means that you're, this is during your residency or your capstone project, right before you start doing the last semester of your nursing school, where the majority of your time is spent getting ready for the NCLEX, and when you're not getting ready for the NCLEX, you're working at the hospital getting some on-the-job training. This is your residency portion of nursing school as an RN BSN. So, um, unbeknownst to me, I thought I was gonna send my resume once I had finished nursing school, but no, a couple of smart classmates had already done that, and they sent out their feelers, gotten some networking, and brought out some resumes and even started interviewing while we were doing clinicals in between the days that we weren't working. So once again, before you even graduate, get that resume ready to go, polish up your interview skills and send them out, get those interviews, hit that job market. Um, be very, very confident that you're gonna pass the NCLEX because when the employer does take you on and give you a job offer, especially at these large academic hospitals, you better have your nursing license by the time you start the program at their hospital. Otherwise, it will drop you like a hat. Drop you like a, do drop you like a weight. <laughs> All right, um, so basically keep hustling. If not, then just enjoy your graduation and then figure it out from there. Uh, some people don't want to take their NCLEX yet. They want to take a couple of months. Do that as well. However, once again, make sure you pass. I didn't pass and I suffered for it because not only did my, um, my ego suffer, but I had to also bear the brunt of trying to figure out a way to pay rent. Uh, luckily, my nurse practitioner school classes started soon after, but there are many people that aren't waiting to go into a nurse practitioner program, and so they have nothing else to go on, and their bills start piling up, so that's very scary. Kids, if you're like in your 20s and you just graduated high school and you got your nursing degree, this is a very scary time. This is when you start to become an adult. So if you don't have a job lined up, you're asked out. Um, unless you're a couple of the girls in my class, they, unless you had um, parents who are nurse managers or um, you could go back and live with your parents. You know, not everybody has that luxury. So keep hustling and hustle hard, hustle fast. Number two. Each resume has to be tailored. I had, I wasn't getting any bites out of my resumes that I was sending out and I thought, man, this is really tough competition. You know, just because there's a nursing shortage nationwide doesn't mean there's no nursing shortage in the state that you live in. Particularly in my state, there is no nursing shortage. At least no nursing shortage in the lucrative hospital jobs. Anyway, so um, I finally decided to go to a uh, nursing interview uh, workshop by the human resources manager and boy did I learn a bunch of stuff okay so save yourself the day and just listen to this one make sure your entire resume is tailored for the job that you're looking for this is common sense but nobody really tells you how to do it I'll tell you what you do you look you look at the job description where the hospital usually these uh, applications says you know new nurse let me make sure this is rolling <laughs> Yeah, okay, sorry. Uh, make sure that it says new nurse, uh, new nurse grad, and then look at the job description. There may be very few, but whatever those keywords are, they're looking for, that's what the human resources agencies are looking for. Before you even get to have your resume seen by a nurse manager, you ha it has to be screened out by human resources. They look at your resume to make sure that you click all the boxes of what they're looking for. If it says, in the job description, they're looking for somebody with leadership skills and qualities. Make sure that your resume states that on the very top and then describe a little bit about it um, uh, under the specific job that you uh, were able to get the, get the leadership skills in. So for example, um, 
I put leadership on my um, my objective on the very top of my resume and then on one of my jobs that I had done that was pertinent to nursing I put down that I did this leadership wise this was a problem this is what happened and here's the numbers the result of the numbers that I did which made it better okay so basically put it in that format so put it on the top so the the human resource person can when they're scouring every single resume they see it right up on top and then they look and they see that like okay this guy has leadership qualities I'm gonna forward this resume to the nurse manager then the nurse manager has to look at your resume again okay so you need to get past that first gate which is a human resources and to do that you simply just have to take the job description take out the words of what they're looking for put it in your resume okay um, also something to note that your resume gets harder and harder um, to customize and tailor the more jobs you do it's exhausting because you never know if you're gonna get anything back or even hear anything back so the more resumes that you pump out the less the, the, the worse you feel really because you, you're just doing all this for you know for what seems like no gain so I advise that uh, when you wake up in the morning hopefully you already had a plan from the night before make sure that you don't pass those deadlines if it says you know that the deadline is gonna expire at uh, this day you make sure that you finish and, and submit the resume at least two to three days before that okay maybe do some proofreading or whatever but make sure you're at least one day before the expiration because sometimes um, some of those resumes will our application job application postings will close because they received too much um, uh, too many inquiries or they will um, they will end the midnight before thinking that you had six hours or a few hours to turn in your resume when you really didn't so make sure I mean that's just common sense but um, it I lost one of the jobs that way <laughs> okay number three you can still avoid the stress and not even play the game okay it's very scary to have to work very hard in nursing school graduate um, and then try to pass your NCLEX but also try to get a job while you're trying to pass your NCLEX um, some people just don't work that way some people can't add them all one on top of the other um, the ones that do usually have to because they have no choice they, they have to earn a living and that's a lot of stress and that's really sad uh, because you're supposed to enjoy um, when you graduate from nursing school I, I see a lot on Instagram or Facebook look at me I'm an RN BSN I earned it blah blah, blah. that's cute and I don't poop all over that because you really did work your butt off I know I don't underestimate nurses now because I know how much the school really sucked. It was very difficult. And so you should enjoy. You should do a photo shoot with you um, with your cute scrubs or your graduation cap or whatever. <laughs> but just know that that's not the end game. The end game is for you to have a job, um, a steady job, whether it be part time, per diem, or full time, at uh, a place that you want, under the times that you want. Okay, and, um, but. You can also not give in to the um, part where, oh my gosh, I have to work at this hospital and I have to work at this specific unit, otherwise I can't put it on my Instagram, you know. Maybe it's just me with sour grapes, but I learned a lot working for different hospitals and different um, units. I really don't want to work in a sniff because I've, I've worked in some before and uh, it's very difficult work but it is acute care that's the key word that they, the employers want to see if you don't get a new grad position as acute as a new grad nurse um, you just have to wait like what you know another eight to ten months and then you'll have been a registered nurse for about a year now hopefully and um, you were working full-time in an acute care facility you'll already have the, um, um, the experience necessary for trying to get into another job just not as a new grad nurse so have a little faith in yourself you may not get the amazing um, specifically tailored new grad nurse um, training that other people had but at least you'll bring something more to the table in terms of seeing new patients seeing how other hospitals do certain things and um, how you know what makes the difference between a good nurse and a not so good nurse you know so yeah, enjoy some. Sometimes some of the places that are hospitals or teaching hospitals, they actually are nice because um, for grad students like myself, it's nice to have a job that's um, the patient's load is a little bit easier and it's not as hectic um, and there's not so many um, other intercollaborating medical teams that you have to work with. You know, you're just taking care of one specific patient and it's a small population. 
um, and then you know look for um, alternative working areas that have been around for at least 20 years and then check out the staff you know even if there might be a high turnover are there at least half the staff that have been there for years and you'll find that there's a lot of salty nurses that can teach you a thing or two <laughs> but try not to cut corners and don't um, don't lose your integrity if you like for example in um, in one of the places that I work per diem at uh, some of the uh, nurses that have been there for a while um, you know, they don't come on time. They usually make me wait the whole 30 minutes that I could have used to give them report and then thinking, well, I just, you know, I worked really late last night and I don't need to have your full report, so just have it. And for a while, it, it annoyed me, but, um, you know, that's the culture of the environment over there. I'm not gonna let that change me. I always show up to work on time and I'm always ready to give report um, at the top of the hour uh, at seven o'clock. But if they do choose to come at 7.30, at least I'll have pre-written it down and said, hey, here's what you missed. I'm just gonna give you the recap um, and then you can read the rest, okay? So I'm, no, no, ch no, there's no reason getting mad about it. Just work your way around it without sacrificing your integrity. These are some of the lessons that I like to learn from some hospitals that are, are, are not you know, teaching hospitals or, you know, they're smaller organizations, you know, stuff that you can learn. Um, so yeah, don't ha you don't have to play the Kool-Aid. Um, one secret and one good news for people who don't get to the new grad position. <clears throat> By the way, I'm also, I'm getting another interview <laughs> for a new grad. Um, basically my reasoning is, is that um, if somebody says that I have, you have to have less than six months of an RN experience, well, it's true. I didn't get my RN until halfway through the year of last of this year. So I graduated um, exactly one year ago in December, and I didn't get my nursing license till July because I had just done stupid things, you know? So I had to retake the test and get my license. And now that I have my license, I lost my new grad offers. You know, it was really sad, but I learned that there's more to life than just a large academic hospital and that I can learn a lot of things from different units and different other places um, besides you know, skilled nursing facilities. There's hospice, there's acute care for psychiatric uh, patients, there's urgent cares, there's outpatient clinics, there's, um, you know, there's even some urgent care clinics you can see some really uh, devastating stuff before they even get to the ER. So there's a whole world out there. Now, sorry, where was I? Like I said, there's a whole world out there that everything has to be just only in the academic teaching hospitals. Sorry you won't be able to play out your Grey's Anatomy fantasy, but however, you'll also know that there's more than just one place that you can work at, okay? So um, when you're stuck in from nursing school to graduation to a uh, academic teaching hospital to your you know to trying to find your perfect unit you know you have to be working at the ICU or you have to work at the ER or labor and delivery um, you know when you become unhappy then it becomes very scary for you especially if you're a new nurse and you haven't felt burnout before um, I've worked previously for about a decade as an LVN as, and as a corpsman in the military and I know what burnout is um, you know, I mean, this is a, working for other people and taking care of their health is a noble job, but sometimes people are terrible and they're awful to you. Um, and if, not, if that's not the patient, that's also the staff. And um, you need to be able to know that you can go somewhere else because if this is all you've known, all you've known is a, the academic hospital or all you've known is a premium um, department that you work at, you put your entire identity into that specific specialty. And then when you're being treated unfairly or um, you're not able to adapt to the change that you know people are implementing um, that's going too fast that you can't adapt to, um, it becomes very sad and you become very burnt out and you start showing up to work late and you, you know the shifts start getting harder and harder, you make less friends, you reach out to less people and you become a less competent nurse. Um, because your personal life and your outside life starts to get affected, so it affects your work. And I know we like to pretend that, um, you know, we change our game, we put our game faces on during work, and nothing that happens in our personal lives affects our work, but it does. So it's your job to be able to uh, balance yourself out in your, uh, in your personal life so that your work life becomes on the ball, okay? So have fun. Know that there's choice out there. Hey, 
in, in 2018 wasn't that great for me, but I learned a lot of things. It made me, made me become a more resilient nurse. And now that I have jobs, more and more people are asking if they can hire me because they know that I'm a profitable, safe, and competent nurse, and I love my job. And it, that why? Because I have options, all right? So 2018 sucked, but it gave me a good lesson that you need to keep going and know that if you don't get what you want, then you go get something else and you figure it out from there and then you learn from that and then you start going and um, reaching out for your goals, okay? So 2019, we're gonna do it right, guys. Right, Nurse Howie right here, YouTube, subscribe, and I promise to start putting up more videos. Not that I'm getting better at this um, camera stuff, okay? Let me know, comment down below what you wanna see and I hope you guys are doing well. I really miss you guys. Thanks for sticking with me um, all throughout my RN, BSN graduation and into my nurse practitioner program. Okay, all right, have a great happy 2019. Enjoy, bye.